everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Emily if this is your first time here you're welcome and if you've been here before thank you very much for coming back I'm currently a third year medical student in the Nipro Medical Institute and I am doing the four-year graduate entry program in my last video I gave an overview of the whole course and this is the second part of the video so in the first half of this video I gave a brief overview of the course the university calendar the class organization, the lecture schedule and timetable, and the course content. So this second part will entail the teaching style, the study materials that are available, the mode of assessment, the grading system, and a little note on attendance. Thank you so much my subscribers and everyone watching my videos. Please if you've not subscribed, kindly subscribe, like and share my videos, and also turn on your notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. Thank you very much. Please make sure that you watch the first part of this video because this is just a continuation and there's some important points in the first part which will be useful for you also. So the second part I will start on the teaching style. So the teaching style is divided into two. We've got lectures and also practice classes. The lectures can be for the O group which is like 150 to 200 students or it could be for the sub group which is for like the 15 students depending on the um, course and also depending on the lecturer while your practice class would be just for the 15 of you so your lectures can be in your groups or your dozens while your practical classes will be in your dozen just the 13 or 15 students in your subgroup so some modules have just lectures some have lectures and practice while some have practice classes in the lecture only class the lecturer will only come and give you all the information you need in a practice only class the lecturer provides you with the lecture materials and any information that you will need to prepare for the class you will need to listen to your um, lectures or study your powerpoints and materials before the class so in the practice class the lecturer would ask you questions this is done orally like an assessment make sure that you thoroughly understand the topic they will ask you if you've got any questions and if you've not got any questions they would ask you any question from the materials that they have sent you to study this oral assessment are usually graded i will talk more about the grading system towards the end of this video so for modules that you have lectures and practice in the lecture the lecturer would come give you all the information we need and in the practice class they will also come and question you orally and assess you this lecture and the practice class usually are on separate days but there's some modules that you'll be questioned and you'll be lectured in the same uh, time slot so if you've got an hour and a half or if you've got two hours for your lecture the first star will be oral assessment of the previous lesson that you started and the second half will be lecture on the next topic that you'll be questioned on in the next class if you get what i mean so the first half of the lecture would be assessment on the last lecture you you had while the second half will be a new lecture on which you'll be tested in the next class next time that you have a lecture so half of it is lecture and half of it is practical in these classes also some lecturers can treat questions so when they lecture you about topics maybe like pharmacology and they lecture you on like a particular group of, of, of drugs they can also have some core questions in class which you need to practice just to reinforce the knowledge that they've passed on to you so that when you see such questions in the core exam you would have an idea of uh, what it means and also you will be able to understand how the knowledge of what you've been taught is tested in croc so by lecturers and stimulating the students with croc questions they're able to relate the knowledge of what they are learning to the way they will be examined in the croc exam so the next point i'll be going to is the study materials usually we've got three modes in which we can access the study materials there's google classroom which is like the main source of uh, materials for all the students. In Google Classroom, you would have each module, and under each module, there will be materials for you to study. So we have your materials, your PowerPoints, links to textbooks, links to G Drive, or any other information that the lecturer would like to pass across. In this Google Classroom also, there are Google Forms you, which you will need to fill. Some of them might be MCQ, some of them can be like tags like essays. So 
this is your assignment so there there's a part of the google classroom for your lecture notes and all the information and a part of it also for like your classwork your assignments your essays and usually you can submit some of these assignments like the essays via classroom or, or your mcqs are usually via classroom and in the google classroom also there are your lecture details your timetable the syllabus all the topics you'll be studying for a particular module the details of all the assignments you need to complete and the submission when these are uh, how to submit and um, when they are due for submission and also in the, as i said earlier some core questions are also uploaded on the google classroom so you could study them towards the CROC exam. The second one is the university portal. So when you register, you will have a login detail and a password with which you can access the university portal. Now the university portal is a collection of a lot of information. And this is for everyone in perspective of the year. So it covers modules that year one student will study year two students. So even though I'm in third year, I can access biochemistry classes, I can access anatomy classes, and also I can access courses in the fourth or fifth year. So it's just a wealth of information for the whole uh, university, for all the students to access. So it's usually like PowerPoint presentation and so many information that you would need to study all the modules in the course. The last one is the G Drive. Some lecturers have their resources on G Drive, so they will send you the link. And in, through this link, you can access uh, scanned copies of textbooks. You can access the details of the module, the syllabus, the timetable, every instruction that relates to the uh, module. And also about assignment, the questions are already there. So as soon as you complete the lecture, you would have you would have another folder in that G Drive that contains the assignment that relates to the um, lecture that you've just had so when it's time for you to submit the assignment everything is there for you to uh, assess Microsoft team also has a platform where you could uh, assess some information also and usually does um, for attending lectures and also for submission of assignment the next point is assessment so you might be wondering how this courses assessed it's quite different from the way it's assessed in the UK because the mode of assessment is a continuous mode of assessment so every week you assess at every lecture you can be assessed so it's a continuous uh, mode of assessment is invited into like oral assessments where you'll be questioned sometimes the lecturer can actually call out your name and ask you this question it could be uh, like in form of MCQs where you would have to sit and MCQs it might be time where the lecturer can give you a day or two to do the MCQ and also you have essays which you will need to um, read a piece of material or piece of information and answer the questions. For the oral assessments you're assessed and you're graded on the spot. For the MCQ you might be graded on the spot or you might be um, graded some days or even some weeks after you've submitted the assignments while the essays is usually um, graded thereafter. So outside these um, oral assessments, outside these MCQs and essays that you would do every week, there's something called module control and this module control are usually to test your knowledge over a period of time on what you've studied over a period of time. So for example, if you've got a module where you would study 18 topics for the whole semester so you have a module control to uh, assess your what you've studied from like the first lecture to the sixth lecture another module control will assess you what you study from the seventh lecture to the twelfth lecture so it will be a module control at the end of the sixth lecture another module control at the end of the twelfth lecture another module control at the end of the eighteenth lecture so that will test your knowledge on what you've learned from the thirteenth lecture to the eighteenth uh, lecture I hope that makes sense so your module control would assess you on everything you've learned for a period of time so that's talking about six weeks so that's usually very grilling so you need to like study your materials very well so the module control depend also on the lecturer and also on the module so, so there's some modules that you might not need to do a module control on and there's some modules that you need to do module control on so that usually depends on the lecturer after the module controls after the oral assessment and mcq some lecturers can require you to sit the exams after the end of the semester and these exams can be oral assessments essays or also mcq so at the end of 
your module controls and the end of the uh, semester exam as a third year medical student to be required to sit croc which is uh, a state exam that all third year uh, medical students would sit so they can progress to the clinical years so for this croc you will need to sit it around june july or at the end of the third year so the modules that you need to study for CROC will be everything that you learned from year 1 to 3. So it's biology, normal anatomy, histology, normal physiology, biochemistry, pathological anatomy, pathophysiology, microbiology, and pharmacology. So it entails things from like year 1 and year 2, like the biology and normal anatomy, and also things from like the third year, second third year, like histology, normal physiology, biochemistry to pharmacology. So that will be the last exam you will need to sit to conclude the third year. And after that, you can progress to the fourth year for your clinical rotations. My next point is the grading system. The maximum amount of points that you can get for each module is 200 points. And these points are usually called balls. So that's 200 balls for one single module. So out of these 200 points, about one ten of these account for all the module controls you've done and also the oral assessment, the MCQs and the essays that you've done throughout your module. That accounts for one ten. So then there's additional uh, 80 points, maximum of 80 points that accounts for your final model. So the final model that you do at the end of the semester account for 80 points. And there's an, an additional 10 points which you could get if you have an individual contribution to the department or if you've done any individual work. So 110 for all the MCQs and all the oral assessments, 80 for your final model, which makes 190, then the 10 points would be for any individual work that you've done. The oral assessment and the MCQ that accounts for the 110 points is graded based on like the 4 mark uh, system. So for if you get 5 marks, you'll be added, awarded 6 points. If you get 4 marks, you'll be awarded 5 points. If you get 3 marks, you'll be awarded 3 points. And anything below, um, anything like if you get a mark or 2, you'll be awarded 0. So that means that you fail the assessment. That is how it works for oral assessments. Then for the MCQ, it could be over 100 percentage. So 0 to 59 percent gives you grade 2, which is 0 points. 60 to 74 percent gives you grade 3, which is 3 points. 75 to 89 percent gives you grade 4, which is 5 points. Then 90 to 100 percent gives you grade 5, which is 6 points. So like 5 is excellent, 4 is good, 3 is satisfactory, and everything under 3 is unsatisfactory. So for this MCQ, you will be required to have at least 60% for you to be able to pass that MCQ. So for anybody that has scored grade 2 and below, you will need to do a rework. And a rework is usually when the lecturer would allow you to do that model again. Maybe for oral assessment, they will, allow, they will have a special class arranged for those that need to do a rework then the lecturers will ask them the questions again then they can improve their mark when they do the rework for croc you have to pass at least 60 percent so that is the minimum you need to make for your croc exam if you get below 60 percent you will need to retake the croc uh, exam so the remaining 10 points would be for your individual work so the, the individual work that you can do are things like if you carry out research work and have a publication in a journal or scientific papers if you participate in the student scientific society and if you have create manuals or illustrative materials that can be used for lectures and for practicals so these three points are the ways by which you could get that 10 points so if you're able to do well in your one 10 points from your oral assessment and mcq then your final module which is 80 points then this 10 percent can help to upgrade your points for you to sit your final module so you can pass your mcq but for you to sit your final module there's usually some conditions that you need to have met so the first one is that you need to have attended all your lectures and your practical classes or you need to have reworked all missed classes so you should not have anything outstanding from all your lectures or all your practical classes on every work you need to do you need to have completed everything for your uh, 
model content you need to have good grades for you to be allowed to see the final model you need to show like a record of all your assessments or all your homework so for homeworks that require you to have essays you need to have a proof of all your homeworks and all your essays and so generally your attendance carries a huge part and also your academic performance you need to have demonstrated a level of um, dedication for them to allow you to sit your um, final module control so that accounts for the remaining 80 percent your mcqs your assessments then your individual work then your final model that would be how you would generate your points for the 200 points if you have 180 to 200 points or both you have an excellent result for 140 to 179 balls that's a good result for 120 to 139 balls that is a satisfactory result. Anything less than 119, that is unsatisfactory. So that's the way the 200 points works. Last part is something on attendance. So attendance is very important. Every class, the lecturer would call out the names and mark everyone that is present in that lecture. And if you turn up late, the lecturer might not allow you to take part in that to take part in that class. So it's quite important for you to be present and also for you to be on time. So you are not allowed to be late for your lectures, and also you need to be present at every lecture. As I said earlier, your attendance plays a huge role on whether you be allowed to sit your final module control or not. If you miss a class or if you are absent, you need to write to the dean's office and ask for a sleep of exemption to allow you to do your work so that sleep we need to say why you were absent and they would see that it's enough reason for you to be allowed the rework so until your lecturer receive this sleep then they would be able to rearrange another time for you to do this rework so that is it's a lot of stress trying to get to the dean's office and trying to get this sleep so it's best for you to do what you can to attend every lecture i know there's some circumstances that are unavoidable but as much as you can try and attend your lectures because it's quite important as i said earlier your attendance might be used to determine if you would qualify to sit your final module control or not so that's just the end of the whole uh, point but in general just to say that uh, let your lecturers treat you like doctors they ask you questions uh with a level of expectation that you know what you need to say you know what you need to do they expect a level of professionalism a level of dedication from you so if you turn up to your class and they ask you questions and you don't know it's quite a bad situation so they expect you to start behaving like doctors like responsible individuals like people that are capable of becoming good doctors so there's that level of um you need to know it's not like there's no, they don't want any excuse like, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm not able to do this. They expect a level of dedication from every of their students. For the offline students, they are required to wear like lab coats and caps to lectures and practical classes. Uh, online students, when the lecturer is asking you questions, they sometimes require you to switch on your cameras. Some lecturers are not really bothered about this, but most of them would like you to switch on your camera so they would know what they are talking to. And it just shows that you're making an effort to be present in class, both physically and also mentally. The uh, offline students have a blue book where they will register all their marks and the lecturers have to input their grades, while online students would have all their grades online. At the end of every MCQ, you would have a record of your grades. So that's how you keep your grades if you're an online student. But if you're an on-campus student, you should have a blue book where you will register all your marks and grades and you can get this blue book from the dean's office so that's the end of the video today so far it's been good it's been a lot of work the information you are required to know is quite enormous and the rate at which you are assessed is a lot because you're assessed every single like every single week you need to prepare for something every single lecture you need to be ready to answer questions and answer it properly because some lecturers that would keep questioning you until they get the right answer they want so you need to be prepared when you come to lectures so it is quite important for you to be on top of things not procrastinate because the work would keep mounting and you need to get things going so time management is quite important and also not to procrastinate because the workload will keep increasing so the earlier you work on things the better 
thank you very much for watching please uh, if you've not watched the first part of this please kindly watch it so that you can have a full understanding or a full overview of the whole course uh, thank you very much once again if you've not subscribed kindly subscribe like my videos and also share my content and turn on the notification bell so that you may be notified when I post new videos. Thank you very much once again for your time and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.